What's going on everybody? Just in case here. Thank you so much for checking out today's video here on my YouTube channel. Today guys, we're here talking about Robert Griffin the 3rd as it has been yet another year. Another year, Robert Griffin the 3rd is headed to injured reserve with another broken bone, another injury. It's just he never shakes the injury bug. That is his ultimate issue in his NFL career is staying healthy. The guy has not, you know, remained healthy for an entire year of his NFL career. I had a lot of high hopes for RG3. Is he going to be the next Michael Vick? Is he going to be the next Randall Cunningham? No, he's not even close to being that. RG3 is just dwindling down right now. And, you know, this latest injury, you know, what do you, what do, you do? What do you do? That is the biggest question. You know, you have RG3 signed to a two-year contract, you know, with the Cleveland Browns, and they brought him in to, you know, be the, you know, centerpiece on their offense to be part of this new era in Cleveland Browns football. And this Browns team, you know, they did a great thing. They have a veteran quarterback in Josh McCown to take RG3 underneath his wing, and that's a good addition. That is a great, you know, you know, a learn. That's a great coach right there, Josh McCown coaching up RG3. That's the way you got to do it. Because Josh McCown has a ton of experience on his belt in the National Football League, and now that he's going to be starting quarterback, RG3 gets to sit at home and rest his non-throwing shoulder as it's a, a coracoid bone in his, you know, uh, in his non-throwing shoulder. And that's going to cost him eight weeks of the of his NFL season. So when you go in and look at it like this, you know, the Cleveland Browns are a team that some people say could win one game, could win two games at most. People, you know, are even saying graciously if the Browns could even squeeze out three wins this year. You know, the Browns do have a lot of great talent on their team. You know, the names sound fantastic. Guys that really stand out to me, you know, Hayden, uh, Nate Orchard is a guy who's very, very, very underrated. Um, Corey Coleman is there. You know, they do have a lot of great pieces to be, you know, a fantastic team in the near future. But, you know, your quarterback position has been the primary focus of that team, you know, for years and years and years. So they have gone through seven different quarterbacks, I don't know, about 10 years or something like that. And they just have not found the the right one they probably saw it in Johnny Manziel he's out you know now that they saw it in RG3 he's out now they're gonna see it in Josh McCown God forbid you know he he's been out of Tampa Bay he's been out of Chicago could he be next on the list and then you have Cody Kessler a guy who I think <clears throat> should not even be coming close to an NFL field this year because I think he has all the right tools, all of the right traits to become a great quarterback in, the, in you know, about two or three years as a backup. You know, like I said, you know, learning under Josh McCown will be fantastic and, you know, he needs to do it. But Cody Kessler is now taking on the role as a backup quarterback to Josh McCown now and I just don't think that is the right option for them. I think, you know, this could be a time where, you know, maybe an Austin Davis should come back to the team. Um, he's just been buried on the depth chart. You know, the Browns at one point had what six quarterbacks five quarterbacks on their depth chart you know going into training camp it's just been a big cluster of an issue over there you know in Cleveland at the quarterback position for years and years including like I said you know five or six quarterbacks on your roster how many teams actually opened up a camp with five or six quarterbacks I'd see you know four maybe you know at least four you know, one guy going to end up getting cut before training camp even opens up with the rookie mini camps. Those are all, you know, understandable. Then you then you have three quarterbacks, possibly even four quarterbacks battling out during the preseason. But to have five or six quarterbacks on your roster, unheard of. But the Browns did it, but, you know, they were able to trim down the roster. So, um, but like I said, you know, RG3 is gone. You know, he just cannot shake that injury bug. It's the biggest thing. You know, it's been the storyline of his career. Can he stay healthy? Can he play a full year? He has not done that, and, you know, RG3 is now dwindling away. You know, what teams will really want to take him as a starting quarterback? You know, the Browns could have obviously probably been his last chance. You know, there are quarterbacks in the league that already have their quarterback position have already filled. You know, maybe the Dolphins, if, you know, Ryan Tanhill does not work out in the near future, maybe RG3 could be a backup there once Matt Moore retires because he's been, he's an uh, he's an aging, an aging, solid backup quarterback, but maybe he can end up pushing out if Tanhill at some point does not resign. But I don't want to say anything, any, any nonsense here and give you guys an idea. But like I said, RG3 not shaking the injury bug. He is going on injury reserve for eight weeks with a fractured coracoid bone in his non-throwing shoulder. Josh McCown's going to end up taking the taking snaps week two. Cody Kessler is going to be right behind him, and that's pretty much it. The Browns are 0 1 to start the year. Can they rebound next week? Can Josh McCown be the answer to week two? Can the Browns get their first one of the year? My name is Justin Kish. Make sure you guys click that subscribe button, show us some support, share the video, as well as check out my other video, all, all the other video libraries here on the YouTube channel. And I'll catch you guys next time.